so um, bear with us. Okay, great. Um, welcome everybody. Um, I'm Andy Ferrari, Deputy Chief Inform Information Officer at the Buckinghamshire, Oxfordshire and Berkshire West Integrated Care Board and I'm Senior Responsible Owner for the Local Digital Social Care Programme. It's really good to see all of you here at today's event. Um, I think we've got some 80 representatives from social care provider organisations um, registered to join us in what we hope will be an informative and engaging day. Right. Um, Jeannie will be hosting the day with assistance from Darmesh, who's providing local pro program support, and Mira, who's supporting us with the national context of this program. You'll be aware that uh, the social care reforms set out by the government. Um, Dini, I'm just conscious about the slide deck. Um, do we need to yeah. uh, stick that up? Yeah. Yeah, let me just share that. Bear with me. Bit of a visual aid to, to what I'm talking about rather than talking Absolutely. at you. Absolutely. I promise this might be death by PowerPoint today. Thank you, Jeannie. You're welcome. Um, so the social care reforms um, set out on the slide, um, set out by the government in its paper, People at the Heart of Care, uh, which I think was published just over a year ago. Um, and a key part of the reforms is commitment to digitising this se sector of care. NHS England has given integrated care systems uh, quite a unique funding opportunity to digitise adult social care. £1.3 million is committed nationally over the next three years to deliver a programme outlined on the slide there um, to enable 80% of adult social care CQC registered providers to adopt a social care record by March 2024, uh, implement sensor-based falls prevention and detection technologies in care homes for residents most at risk of falls, and to test other types of care technology. Um, today's session is mainly around the um, digital social care record aspect of this programme. So locally, uh, we have a funding commitment from NHS England of £640,000 for each year of this programme. And the purpose of today's event is to provide you with the national and local context of this programme uh, and to introduce you to the digital social care record suppliers who have been certified to participate in this programme by NHS England. And today, we've got the opportunity to receive an overview of each supplier system to assist you in your decision making when evaluating your system of choice. It's a, a quite a cool day, if you've seen, as you've probably seen by the agenda, but it should be a lively event. It's broken up into many sessions and there are many breaks at various intervals. So it's really good to see you all here. Thank you so much for taking the time to time out to take part. Uh, it's a big commitment um, for such a large amount of time, which the team here really appreciates. And we're sure that you'll find today informative and enjoyable. So at this point, um, I'll hand you over to Jeannie, who will take you through the schedule for, for today. Thank you very much. Thanks, Andy. So just a couple of things, actually, before I move on to the schedule, um, just a couple of housekeeping pieces for everybody. Um, as Andy said, it is a whole day and we really appreciate everyone attending, but appreciate you may not be able to attend for the whole day. Obviously, we'd love everyone to attend for the whole day, um, but we have broken the session up um, to allow people to join, um, you know, if there's particular supplier uh, demonstrations you're interested in, so you can just join those. But obviously, please feel free to stay for the whole day if you can, or just join um, the elements that you can. Um, feel free to use the chat function in Teams if you've got any questions. Um, we have set aside time in the schedule, as you'll see, um, but we've set some time aside at 10 o'clock this morning so if you've got any questions from the slides that we're going through in this morning session um, please feel free to put your hand up and ask those then or as we said put them in the chat and we'll respond to them then um, so raise your hand if you've got any questions um, we may not be able to cover all of the questions today so we appreciate we've got a lot of people on the call um, but we will be doing a frequently asked questions after the session and sharing that with everyone so if your question isn't answered don't worry, we will be answering it through that um, frequently asked questions. Um, and can I ask, obviously, everyone, please keep yourselves on mute um, unless you are asking a question. And as I think, as, as Darmish mentioned at the beginning, we are recording each session and we will make those available to everybody. Um, and if you've got any questions after the event, there's my contact details. So Jeannie Brown, NHS.net. So please feel free to email. Um, so just to move on then for the schedule of the day. Um, 
so I've just gone through the schedule, the schedule, and then next up will be the national program update from Mira from NHS England. Um, and then we'll be covering the event aims and objectives, the digitising social care programme across Bob. And then Dalmesh will be talking about that funding, support and the application process. And as I mentioned at 10, we've got some time for questions and answers. And we have then got a break to give people time to go away and if they've got to do any emails. And then we're back again um, at 11.05. Um, and then that's when we'll be having the supply demo. So you can see we've got nine of the suppliers on the assured supply list attending today. Eclipse have um, said they can't attend today, but they are obviously very interested in talking to any individual um, providers that are interested in their solution and providing a demo of that. So it's just really to flag that there's there's one that's not attending Danish. Sorry, do you need to interject? I was just going to no. ask if you're able to um, um, show the slides in um, slideshow mode. Oh, sorry. If you're able to do that. Is that better? Yeah, perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. OK, so I'll move on to uh, Mira um, to provide the national programme update. Thanks, Jeannie, and uh, thank you very much for inviting us over to um, your event today. It's um, very, very positive to see this level of turnout uh, from the sector. So thank you once again for making the time. And I hope that you find today quite informative. And most importantly, it helps inform your decisions going forward and um, whether you would like to um, take up this opportunity and pilot some of this very innovative technologies within your um, businesses. So, um, I mean, I have to say that Andy gave a very good update of what the national program is about. So maybe I will be repeating myself slightly, but just um, to start off by way of introduction. So I'm Mira Dimitrova. I'm a program manager in the National Digitising Social Care program here at NHS England, and I oversee London and the South East. Um, and all of um, our, um, I suppose, core policy objectives are aimed at ensuring that the adult social care system makes the best use of digital tools and technologies so that they can deliver improved care and outcomes for the people that we support. In terms of why do we think digitizing is important, especially um, as we are now sort of at the tail end of a global pandemic. Um, we know that 50% of care providers are still working from paper care records. Um, it, it, there are a number of issues that I'm sure you're well aware of when it comes to using paper for record keeping, non the least um, opportunities for um, errors, um, archival and um, overall you know, poor practice when it comes to um, handling, inf handling sensitive information. We do think that, you know, there is an opportunity to maximise the benefits of digitisation, such as, you know, supporting high quality and safe care, improving efficiency, freeing up precious time that can be then delegated to other important areas of the work. And then um, if we move slides, please. Um, this is just a higher, a high level overview of what is in scope for the programme. So this year we've been working with each and every integrated care board in England to facilitate a digital transformation fund, um, which um, has um, its main focus around enabling adoption of digital social care records, but also sensor based force prevention and detection technologies such as acoustic monitoring being one example, but also exploring some other future care technologies and small scale pilots to support us with generating um, the necessary evidence base to make future policy decisions. And in a separate, um, I suppose, strand of the national program, we also have supporting independence through technologies. So this focuses more on supporting daily living tasks such as um, you know, men's dispensation, getting ready for the day, personal hygiene, transportation, communication, 
but that is slightly separate. So I wouldn't go into too much detail of that particular strand of the program. So um, as the team outlined, you know, the focus for today is really on digital social care records. And here are some of the examples of feedback that we've received from um, individuals and businesses that have adopted DSCRs to date and why they feel that going digital is the right choice for them. You know, you can see them on the screen here. These are just some of the anecdotal examples and feedback that we've received, but things such as, um, you know, not having to tell your story multiple times because it's recorded and that record is uh, able to be shared in a secure manner. Um, it can be changed easily, so it remains up to date when you're refreshing care plans. Um, it's responsive and safe. It means that people receive the right and appropriate care at the right time and many, many more. Um, in terms of, you know, how is the workforce finding these solutions and implementing them into their daily practices? Um, you know, some of the feedback has included um, improvements in terms of um, the amount of time spent on record um, inputs, management, updating, etc. So being able to quickly and easily import data or find relevant information for individuals all in one place, having it visually represented back to you. So this is very helpful and uh, when it comes to, for example, a, a diverse workforce that perhaps includes people for whom English isn't their first or native language or who uh, prefer information to be presented to them visually rather than a written format. Um, provide data to inform the right people at the right time to improve decision making. It prompts alerts and enables further personalization so that the care continues to be tailored to the individual's needs and improving the workforce to be more digitally confident and improving their skills when it comes to um, digital in general that could be then translated into other parts of their work or their personal lives as well. Uh, here's an example from a neighbouring system in the southeast. Um, so uh, I just use this quote because I think it illustrates quite neatly, you know, what we're trying to achieve here. So this is from Hampshire and Isle of Wight, but um, th they're talking about the benefits that they've seen from adopting a DSCR, such as um, review new and existing admissions and results, meds, allergy details, um, so that they feel ready and prepared to receive that person, liaising with the relevant uh, healthcare professionals and then ensuring that everything is coordinated properly. It's then ensuring that care workers save time and GPs can deliver better quality of care because they have the information ahead of time um, and that saves you know, some of that initial um, questioning and probing that we're also familiar with. And um, I don't think I don't, we could. Oh, we got a bit of um, background noise. Bear with me. There we go. Um, I don't think we would play the video, but I'm sure once the slides are circulated, you could get um, to play around with them. But we've been very um, um, happy to work with the CQC over the last 12 to 18 months to ensure that the system receives a single message when it comes to why is it important to digitise and why we should move to digital record keeping. So to um, have Mark Sutton, who's the Chief Digital Officer at the CQC, uh, verbally sort of publicly endorse this and, and communicate that this will be um, becoming part of the single assessment framework and it will be reflected in the questions that the CQC asks of providers makes it that much more relevant, I think, and that much more, um, I suppose, endorsed. Um, we are working jointly because we don't want to confuse the system and give um, mixed messages. So hopefully, as and when you are engaging with the CQC, this is becoming apparent that this is the direction of travel. So I think uh, this; these are all of my slides. Um, like I said, the main, oh, is it actually going to play? We don't need to um, do that. Uh, people can do that after, after the call. But um, like I said, um, 
encouraging everyone to dip in and out from today's sessions. You know, if you have any solutions in mind that you're mostly interested in or just want to get a flavor for what the functionalities and capabilities are, um, I hope that you can find um, the right fit for you and Jeannie and the program are offering immense levels of support to help you and not to mention the um, added bonus of some national funding. So um, that's it really for me. Um, thank you once again and um, I hope today goes swimmingly well. Thank you very much Mira, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I was going to say, Darmesh, is it possible for someone from your team to share the slides? Because I can't see the slides and see everyone at the same time. Yeah, that's fine, Jeannie. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll take over. If you um, if you stop Thank sharing you. and we will take Thank over. Thank you very much. That's fine. Uh, Ellie, are you OK to, to yeah, take that's over? Fine. Yeah, I'll share slides. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie. I've also um, got also, a YouTube video link for the chat, if that's helpful. Please, if you can do that. I, yeah, OK. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Back, so I think we're, on. yeah, so we're on the event aims and objectives, Ellie. Slide 17. Oh, sorry, I've clicked on. There we go. Oh, no, not that one. Oh, there we go. Yeah. OK, it. got it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, so um, as, I, as we mentioned, so I'm Jeannie Brown. I'm the digital program lead for the Bob ICB, so that's Buckinghamshire, Oxfordshire and Berkshire West Integrated Care Board. So that's the three CCGs coming together um, last July as one um, organisation. Um, so I'm actually leading on the digitising social care programme across BOLB. Um, are you all right to move the slide on, please, Ellie? Okay, so just wanted to really cover the aims and objectives of this event today for you all. So what we're hoping is that everyone uh, here today will come away from the event with a really good understanding of the Digitising Social Care Programme across Bob, a good understanding of the funding and application process, uh, a good understanding of the expectations regarding the funding and the deadlines uh, for the applications and signed memorandum of understanding and a good overview of the digital social care record suppliers who are on the short supply list uh, and their solutions core capabilities and lastly a good understanding of the next steps and the main points of contact um, for this program. Next slide please. So I'm going to start with what we've done so far. Um, so I think, as Andy said, this programme, the, the, the white paper was actually published, I think, December 2021. And we started this programme in Bob around May time last year. And during that time, um, we've submitted uh, a year one implementation plan and a three year strategic plan. Um, and that's been approved by NHS England. And we've also um, done a funding agreement uh, for year one and that has been approved and that tranche of funding is starting to flow to us. Um, it is a three year programme and we are at the early stages of this programme and just so mobilising phase and we've held a number of engagement events with our um, local authority colleagues. We've got five local authorities um, across Bob to raise awareness of the programme um, and also to see if they've got any resource and, and to support the programme. Um, I've established a programme board, uh, a group, the governance and the financial controls so that we can devolve that funding to our providers. And um, I also worked with the Oxfordshire Association of Care Providers. I'm sure you probably got a call from them um, to do a bit of a baselining exercise to get so we could get a really good understanding of which providers have already adopted a digital social care record or, or any falls prevention and detection technologies to really help us prioritise um, the funding for this year. 
Um, and then, as you're probably aware, with our colleagues from Channel 3 being on the call, um, we have we, we did um, get an external partner uh, commissioned to help support mobilise us as the local authorities, although supportive of this programme, unfortunately signal they don't have the capacity or the resource to support with that local implementation. So hence the reason we've got uh, colleagues in Channel 3 here today and helping support mobilising um, this programme. So regarding the funding, uh, the NHS Transformation Directorate, which was formerly NHSX, has earmarked an annual funding allocation for Bob, which must be match funded by providers. And Darmish will talk a little bit more about that in his next slide. And, and that funding is really to help support CQC registered adult social care providers to implement a digital social care records, so an electronic care planning system um, and sensor based falls prevention and debt and detection technologies. But just to say that is for care homes only at this stage. Um, so we've developed a funding formula to ensure our offer is equitable to all of our providers across Bob. And the funding is available to providers who are providing services in Buckinghamshire, Oxfordshire and Berkshire West and purchase a digital social care record from suppliers on the assured supply list. And just lastly, to add, providers will be holding that contract with the suppliers. So um, I'm now going to hand over to Darmesh to talk about the funding. Happy. Thank you, Jeannie. Uh, Ellie, next slide, please. Brilliant. So um, um, hi, everyone. Uh, just just very quickly, I think uh, Jeannie has um, kindly introduced us to the core myself and colleagues are on the call today ellie collier and emma garland i won't ask everybody to introduce themselves but as, as Jeannie said we're we're supporting the program to to roll out uh, and, and and help implementation of uh, of digital social care records and sensor-based force technology um hopefully yeah hopefully all if not most of you are now kind of familiar with us uh, and you and you've had communications from us either directly or you've spoken to my colleague Emma in particular, uh, or you've received comms via the local authority uh, or, or the um, Oxford Association of Care Providers. So uh, I won't kind of go go into all of the all of the background, but but Jeannie has kindly kind of given you all the all the main points. What I did wanted to cover off with you this morning, really. Um, um, which I'm sure, which I'm sure is kind of at the forefront of your of your, of your thinking around this is 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 what does the funding offer look like and what does the application process look like? So I'm hoping I can kind of fill in some of those some of those gaps for you. Um, well, well, we'll start talking through the process. If anybody has any questions while I'm talking, please just uh, put it into the chat box. Raise your hand. Um, shout. I, I, I'm 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 quite comfortable um, fielding questions as we as we go along. So. Um, um, please do, please do raise any any, any thoughts or, or questions that you have. Um, Ellie, can we have the next slide, please? Sorry, I'm doing it. There's a delay for some reason. Right. There we are. Technical glitches. Lovely. Thank you. So uh, quite, quite, quite a busy slide, but bear with me. We'll step through it bit, bit by bit. So as 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 you're aware, we, we have funding available for um, for implementing into digital social care records. You may also know it as electronic care plans or electronic care planning. And it's essentially a fund that's there to kind of help care providers um, move forward in their in their digital journeys and, and to help realize some of those kind of digital ambitions or digital aspirations uh, and, and, and helping, you know, some of those providers that are very, very kind of paper dependent to to take those initial steps forward. Um, we also have funding for sensor based falls prevention and detection technologies um, to, to to be to be kind of geared towards those those kind of residents or those people that are being supported that are most at risk of, of, of falls. Um, the digital social care record market uh, you will, will hopefully have seen from the comms that we've already sent out um, to you uh, and you may have seen through the digitizing social care website you know the there's an assured list of suppliers uh Jeannie mentioned that as well um in the in the dscr space um there isn't an assured list of 
suppliers in the sensor based falls list, um, which is part of the reason why we kind of focus today on digital social care records because it because it is more established uh, and there is a there is a path that we can kind of take you through to to, to get on board with, uh, with with selecting and implementing a care record. The sensor based falls prevention is a little bit kind of more open ended. We are doing some work in the background at the moment and we will be looking to kind of host a similar event of this sort um, to to focus very specifically on sensor based falls prevention. Um, so in terms of in terms of the funding, um, uh, um, the funding is um, we, we, we've done some calculations based on the money that we've been allocated into the integrated care board and um, our kind of the intelligence that we've got around how many providers are likely to be interested in a digital social care record uh, of some of some description. And uh, we've kind of taken it from there and then also started to look at right. OK, if you're if you're a provider of a certain size, what is the maximum funding that is available to you? And that's kind of what you can see in the top half of this of this table. So we're offering up to £200 per bed or per person that's supported for a digital social care record um, with a maximum funding allowance of um, uh, if you're up to a location that's got up to 20 beds, then it would be 4,000, 21 to 50 beds, 8,000, and then 51 plus beds, uh, 15,000. Um, so, th so these are maximum funding awards per per location, uh, and it's based on a a um, two hundred pounds per bed or per person supported uh, rate. I'll just take a quick pause there in case there are any kind of immediate questions. Uh, appreciate uh, we've had at least one in the in the chat. Um, is the funding just for care homes? Um, um, it's dom care. Yeah. Emma has just responded to you, so I'll, I'll move on from there. Uh, somebody's got their hand up as well. I didn't catch their name. Yeah, it's myself. Hi, Danielle Abernethy. I'm from Anchor Hanover. Um, no. Just a, just a quick question in terms of that that funding. There, obviously, you've you've noted up to two hundred um, mm. as a, as a maximum figure. Do you have minimum figures that you can share? So, what would be actually the the least amount you, you provider may expect to receive? Um. Do you know what? That's actually it's it's a it's a it's a really it's a really fair point that you, and, and and detail that you've picked on and and actually um, that's my that's 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 a fault of mine. It should just say two hundred pounds per per bed. Right. So okay. Apologies. Apologies. No, that's that, fine. Thank, thank you for, for clarifying thank you. that. Thank you. Yeah. No, and appreciate you calling me out on that as well. So completely missed that. So thank you. Um, thank you. Any other any other immediate thoughts or questions? No. Okay. Oh yeah, Janet. <clears throat> yeah, if you've already got a digital system, can you use funding for ongoing training? Can you use funding for sorry? For training. Uh, for, uh, to to use the system that you've already got. Yeah. Uh, no, um, the 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 funding is primarily for the implementation of a of a system and training may be part of that, but yeah, not yeah. not specifically for um, supporting a system that you've already got in place. OK, thank you. OK, I, I thank you. Um, I don't know who was next. The uh, electronic care plan, which we've already got, so I think you're waiting. Sorry, while, while we're waiting, can I just ask everyone to please put themselves on mute? Because I think someone isn't on mute. <laughs> Right, okay. I will see. Right. Somebody muted me. Right. OK, uh, I'm just going to go through my list in the in the order that I can see. It. Uh, uh, Janet, did you have another question or is that a different Janet? Or it might be an old hand. OK, I'll keep going. Uh, John, John Rennison, you've got your hand up. Uh, Yes, hello. Um, oh, yeah. So I, I work um, for a dom care provider and you've set out just what funding is available for residential, but how is it set out? What what of funding is available for, for dom care providers by person supported or whatever? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 that, that was the reason for in kind of saying per bed or per person that's supported. So okay. it's, it's, it's £200 for dom care as well. And do we apply through um, channel three through OACP or some other oh. method? 
Uh, no, well, well, there is a um, there is a there is an information pack that will be coming out to you after after this event. Um, um, hopefully by the end of today or, or early tomorrow, that will include um, all of the information surrounding the application process that I'm about to talk through, and it will include the forms as well. Um, okay. And we are we are on hand to support you with completing that that process. Uh, but ultimately, you will send it to um, Genie once it's completed. OK, so sorry, one other question, which hopefully will resonate with others. So we already have digital um, care records, but we're planning on moving to one of the assured um, suppliers. So would funding be available for a, a transfer to one of those, even though we've, we're not coming from paper, we're coming from other digital? Yeah, the, the the primary aim of the program is to support those providers that are moving from from paper to to digital to kind of give them that that step up. Um, but, you know, um, we will also um, we will also support applications for um, providers that are moving from one system to an assured system. The only caveat to that is, is that um, the funding only supports um, core the, uh, the selection of core functionality um and that care planning element of it so if you've got a solution that's got kind of lots of different additional capabilities um you know that, that kind of family viewing portals for example um and if you've got a medication administration record um, capabilities and so forth the funding wouldn't be available for that so um um, we, we, we can we can have a look. We can have a look at exactly what you've got in place at the moment and what you're seeking to procure, and then help you work out exactly what the funding um, will be will be available for. Okay, thank you. No, all right, Je Jeannie. Just before I move on, is there anything to add on on what I've just described, or anything that you kind of want to correct? No, no, that's perfect. Thank you, John. Lovely. Thank you. Right. Um, thank you, John. Um, I've got one of the. Person, I don't have your surname. Please apologize. Oh, I do. Pramila, you've got your hand up. Yeah, there you go. Hiya. Hi, my colleague with Argus question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we we've got um, a basic system in place already, um, and I think you answered the question already. To be honest. Um, okay. But we was wanting to like connect to the GP service, all that type of stuff. Family as well. Um, and families and um, logging in, logging in, yeah. at, you know, when people are coming for visits and stuff. Yeah. Um, would we be able to apply for that sort of thing for funding? It, it, it's st strictly the answer. The answer would be no on that front. Um, yeah. It is. It is as you as you said. Yeah, as I as I described, it's for core functionality and care care management or care planning capabilities. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Lovely. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, and Casey. Hi, Darmesh. Um, so my initial question was around um, switching, which I believe has been addressed already, but. Okay. Um, just wanted to find out as well um where is where do we find the list of assured providers um well, well, how, we'll how do we know if our current um yeah supplier is on that list or not yeah that's fine uh, uh hopefully you will have received there'll be, there'll be an email or two kind of buried in your inbox i suspect that has that information from from us or the local authority but we'll we'll put that we'll put a link to the assured supplier list um into into the chat as well um, so that you've got it, you've got it today. Oh, there you go. I think Emmett may have already posted it. Um, plus the information pack that I was just referring to in re in response to John's question, um, that will also include the links that you need to the assured suppliers. Is that okay? Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. I can't see any other hands up, so I'll uh, I'll keep I'll keep moving forward. Um, we're focusing on digital social care records today, as a, a, as we said from the outset, but just to kind of make everybody aware, you know, the funding, there is funding available for sensor based fall detection, the, the the market and the and the assured supplier list isn't as uh, as mature as it is for for DSERs, but 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 there is um there is plenty of activity that's going on, not just across the 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 Berkshire, Oxfordshire, and um, Buckinghamshire region, but nationally as well, um, to 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 trial and evaluate different types of falls detection. There's lots and lots of different solutions out there, uh, and we will be coming back to you with kind of 
provide a bit more guidance around what solutions are out there, what other providers are looking at, and uh, and some of the things that you may want to uh, want to look at a bit more closely for your for your kind of high risk falls residents. Um, uh, and in terms of funding for that, we're offering um, kind of up to £758 uh, per resident. Uh, and I'm saying per resident because it is for residential care homes only in this in this particular round. So uh, um, the programme won't, uh, the programme doesn't extend to DOM care providers and their use of sensor based falls. That might change um, in year two or year three of the programme, but it's the current guidance that, uh, that, we're, that we're working to. Um, so before I move on, just kind of a few 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 points, which I think uh, some of which I've already I've already covered. But you know, these 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 funds that we're making available is for first year implementation costs. So when you're making your decision about taking on a particular supplier, you know you need to kind of think through: is it sustainable for you to 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 maintain as a as an organisation uh, and without additional funding support in few in future years? Um, for DSERs in particular, we are providing kind of uh, funding support that covers 50% uh, and we would expect a 50% a match funding from yourselves. Um, and that might be in terms of in terms of money or it might even be in terms of resources, because as part of the implementation of these systems, you'll need to start thinking about making time available for staff to go on training. Um, there'll be data inputting. Um, tasks as well that you might want to will we'll need to consider as well. So, so all of those kind of resource costs can be used as kind of in-kind match funding, if you like. Um, as it says, the funding um, can be used for software licenses, implementation costs, training costs, devices, um, etc. Um, strictly speaking, we're not funding infrastructure upgrades. So I know you know a lot of providers will be working in um, kind of quite quite old, um, quite old buildings where you've got thick walls and high ceilings, and Wi-Fi can be a problem, or it might be a bit patchy. Um, now, I've put an asterisk against that particular line because strictly speaking, we're not supporting it. However, where 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 there is a very very kind of clear case that we've got a provider who is really really kind of committed to moving forward with a DSCR solution um, but um, but what's holding back holding them back is the infrastructure element because Wi-Fi isn't great or you know kind of networks and things um, need really need upgrading before you can make good use of a, a, a social care record um, we will look at those uh, at those cases and seek to support there are also potentially other sources of funding that we can kind of signpost you to, which which we will do. Uh, but if we can kind of provide support to get you up and running, where where the the use case and the benefit is is really clear, um, then we will we will absolutely look to support that as much as we can, um, as well. Um, and last but not least, um, we, we we need to move at pace. Um, the the program. Um, the program has been running for a little while. The first year ends uh, on the 31st of March 2023 um, and then year two uh, will, will, will kick in. But the money we've got available at the moment needs to be spent by the end of March and therefore we need your applications by um, the middle of March at the very latest um, and, and sooner, ideally. Uh, and that's why myself and colleagues are, are, are available um, to kind of to work with you um, to to kind of help you select a solution and to kind of fill in the application form. Um, it's not a particularly onerous application form, I, I would say. I've seen I've seen much more complex forms, so it is it is quite easy to do this. Uh, but there is but, but there is some support that we can we can provide to help you get across the line quickly. So before I move on to the next slide, um, any any further thoughts, questions? Uh, I know there's been a fair bit of chatter. Um, in, in the chat box, which I think colleagues are um, are responding to. If anybody would like to say anything at this point. Um, lovely, right, I will keep moving forward. Um, can I also ask colleagues just to keep me on track with time, just in case, um, just in case I am uh, in danger of going over. Ellie, could you move to the next slide, please? Lovely, thank you. So, as I said, we have a we have a we have a support and application process in in place. 
uh, and all of this information will be in the information packs that we send out to you uh, after 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 this event uh, and it will be explained in, in in more detail but i just thought it was kind of helpful um to 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 kind of describe what we expect you to do and what you can expect us to do as part of this as part of this whole whole process so at the moment so if you, if you kind of start start in the left hand side box so confirming your interest or engagement with us so this is what we're doing with you at the moment and a number of you will have spoken to emma already you'll be speaking to myself and other colleagues in the in the coming days and weeks uh, as we kind of try to help you navigate through the uh, through through kind of the process and establish whether you are kind of interested in in moving forward um with a with a, with a digital social care record um we will send the uh, information pack as we as we said that's kind of just going through a final uh, a final qa um uh, and that will also include various uh, various forms as well um, i'll stop there sanjay you have a question yes hi good morning um sure. we are already a little bit down the process um, on the left hand side. Is it too late to um, ask for an approval to proceed even though we're past that stage? How would that work? OK, so so um, when you say you're you're past that stage, how, how far past it? Have you implemented something already? We have. We've got one user license that we're uploading information onto okay. already, but we haven't gone live across the home, nor have we received any training across the entire process we've okay. got the contract and i've said we've essentially paid the first lump yeah right okay okay uh, 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 and this is a solution that you've selected um from since the approved supplier list from the approved supplier list and and, and in terms of timelines it's uh, it was a conversation that's about been happening since ago. april about a month ago okay okay right in, in that case yeah we can we can we can definitely support that and um that's a uh, thank you for the nudge on that actually because the the a key point about this is also that if you are a care provider that that has already implemented a solution from one of the assured suppliers and you have implemented it since april last year we are in a position um to support funding it will be subject to the caveats around core functionality and care planning and so on, but we will be uh, we will be in a position to kind of help you uh, recoup some of that initial initial cost outlay, if you like. So, um, Super, thank you very much. Lovely, thank you, Sanjay, for the question. Um, <coughs> so yeah, so so we'll send you a we will send you uh, an information pack that will provide much more detail that kind of sits behind here we will it will include various links to resources and things to help you get through that decision making process now the 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 the, cent the, the central team on digitizing social care and um, they've also got a useful resource where you as a provider can go on to it you can kind of select the different areas of capabilities that you want in a solution so for example you may want um uh, you may want a uh, uh, a family portal solution you may want the ability to work offline because network isn't great or wi-fi isn't working and so on and it, and it allows you to kind of select the different capabilities that you want in a solution and and based on your answers it will filter out the suppliers that aren't appropriate for you um so so if you're kind of completely kind of lost with where to start on this list and you don't want to spend time looking at each and every supplier then then, then that that link on the digitizing social care website um, um may well kind of help you get get moving we will of course kind of support that conversation as well um but uh, if i can just ask colleagues uh um emma or joe if you're on the line um if you can um, either, either either remind me because i know where that link is on the um on the digitizing social care website or if you've got that link if you could post it in the chat but we'll definitely make that available to you all as well. Um, so, as I said, that that application, uh, the information pack will contain a number of forms, one of which will be an expression of interest form. So, so if you feel that, yep, yeah, you're 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 ready to move, you're ready to kind of move forward with this. With this, you may not have necessarily have selected a solution at that point in time. What we need from you is an expression of interest form, and that's something that we can kind of fill in with you, if you like, when we're when we're talking to you. Um, it's uh, um, yeah, just 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 gives us an indication of where you would like to go. Ellie, there's a uh, there's a Microsoft pop up box. If you could lose that, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, 
So you fill in an, an expression of interest form. You send that through to us. We 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 on our side, uh, working with Jeannie and other members of the um, integrated care board team, will kind of review that expression of interest. We may come back to you with with various questions, um, but ultimately, what we're looking to do is to is to be in a position where we can kind of give you approval to to proceed, and we will turn that around pretty quickly. You know, so we're not kind of holding up uh, holding up progress. Um, you would then you you and you may already be doing it anyway. Uh, it's not something that you don't necessarily need to wait for approval to start looking at the different solutions suppliers, of course. Um, but but what we would then want you to do is to um, is to select a uh, a DSCR um, solution that you are that you are happy with. Um, you may well have had a a demonstration from a supplier directly on to, on top of what you're likely to see today. Um, and you're happy with the solution that you've seen. At that point, we would need you to request a full 12 month quote from the supplier. Um, and then once you've got that, we would you would then need to fill in the grant application form that will also be in your information pack. Uh, again, we'll be on hand to support you with completion of that. Um, and once you've filled it in, you send it back to us with the quote. Um, we will check the quote. We will check the form that you filled in. We will make sure that it that, that it's uh, it's within the eligible criteria. Um, we will make sure we will try as best as we can to make sure that the quote you've received is fair and appropriate because we've got indicative costings from from the suppliers. Um, so so we'll do all of that kind of background work if you like. Uh, and then once we once we've done that, we will also then kind of come back to you and say right, you've asked you've asked for X we're able to offer you why sometimes it might be a match sometimes it might be a you know kind of slightly different for some, for one reason or another and we'll explain what the reasoning for that is we will send that offer back to you and we will also send you a memorandum of understanding form that memorandum of understanding is the key document that we need back from you by the middle of march and um, because what we're not expecting you to do is to have selected and implemented a solution by the end of March. We fully, fully recognise that implementation may happen further down, further down the year um, when you've got time to, 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 to give it the attention that it needs. But what we do need to ensure that we can commit the funds to you is a signed memora memorandum of understanding that will be signed by ourselves. It will be signed by uh, Andy, Andy Ferrari, our, our SRO that you heard from at the top of the um, top of the day. Uh, and we'll also need you to sign sign it. And, it, and it's a it's a form of commitment, basically, a commitment that says you. Oh, can you go back a slide, Ellie. Thank you. Yeah, it's a form of commitment um, that just says that you are committed to moving moving forward. Um, there, there are some kind of T's and C's in there. Nothing nothing too onerous. Um, and we will um, we will we will uh, work with you to to, to do that. Um, you complete the MOU, you return it to us, we'll check it, we may have additional questions and so on, and then we will authorise the funding offer and and, and, and kind of um, give you confirmation that that is now in place and then you can go ahead with the solution purchase. At some point further down, further down, you know, in a few months time, for example, um, hopefully you will have implemented the solution um, and, and the supplier will have invoiced you. And at that point, what we would need you to do is to um, send us a copy of the invoice. Um, um, we will check that invoice against the funding agreement um, and we will seek to process that payment as soon as possible via bax transfer or a check if that's what you if that's what you would prefer. Again, apologies, a fair, fair, fair bit of information to digest there uh, in, a, in quite a short space of time. Are there any are there any immediate immediate questions? As I said, there are there, there there will be information that kind of supports this and more detail that sits behind this, so you can kind of digest it at your own leisure. And we will be on hand to kind of walk you through the process um, through the various conversations and things that we have with you over the uh, over the next few weeks in particular. And before uh, I kind of finish, yes, go ahead. Sorry, sorry to All interrupt right. you. Um, Alison Jacks asked a really good question, saying that her organisation has got 10 CQC registered adult social care homes. Are we expecting individual applications for funding required for each service or can it be completed in one application? Um, so, uh, Alison, are, are those are those 10 
10 homes all within this region or are they spread further? Hi there, yes, they're all within Buckinghamshire and Berkshire. Okay, okay. Well, in, in that case, yeah, a single application is is fine. Brilliant, yeah. thank you. All right, no problem at all. Um, any other any other questions? Um, there is a question from Larry Grady. He's saying, mm -hmm. obviously, it's the 8th of Feb today, which we completely appreciate. Um, yeah. And it's obviously quite a process to get providers through. Um, so just asking, why the rush? It, it, OK, and uh, actually, nice segue into my next slide, actually. Ellie, Ellie if you could move move uh, move on to that. So, yeah, so, so, so I think the, the you know, the, fir the first question is pertinent uh, to the question you've just raised there. Um, um, there's a rush because we 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 have kind of national guidelines um, that have that, that we have to kind of work to. Um, however, this is a three year three year program. Um, so if you cannot meet get us a um, a, a signed memorandum memorandum of understanding and you haven't made a decision on which solution and you haven't managed to get a quote and so on by the middle of by the middle of March as we as we need it, um, will you miss out on the funding? Um, uh, possibly for this for this round, um, unless you can can get it to us by the by the end of March. You know, I think we can we can stretch it a little bit past the fifteenth of March, but we need we do also need time to process that um, that that application as well. So really, if you can't get it to us by you know by by, by late March, um, then then chances are you'll miss out on this round of funding. Um, unfortunately, we're not yet in a position to exactly say what the funding pot looks like for next year. Um, it's a three-year program, so we have no reason to believe that there won't be funds available. Um, but uh, as of right now, here on the eighth of February, I couldn't I couldn't say to you this is how much money will be available, um, and you've got more time to 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 do that. Uh, Jeannie, is that is that a fair reflection at this point in time? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. Um, Danielle, you've got your hand up. Yeah, thanks. Um, just is there any expectation sort of after you've been through the application process and, and implemented for any sort of ongoing um, relationship with yourselves in terms of sharing of any MI or, you know, benefit management, anything like that? Um, yeah, no, uh, so on the for, for digital social care records, you know, there is there is no kind of mandatory obligation that you must take part in and, and kind of evaluation mm -hmm. and so on. We We would we would we would welcome it sort of thing okay. uh, because because actually um you may well be a pathfinder with some of these with some of these solutions if you choose mm -hmm. to kind of move forward with them and 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 the learnings that you take within your own experience will be really helpful for the rest of the program yeah. and I'm sure yeah. the national team yeah. will be will be looking to 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 kind of utilize that as, as well so there is there is kind of you know when I talked about terms and conditions earlier that is kind of part of the terms and conditions that you would kind right. of work with us to evaluate mm -hmm. sort of thing okay. but we're not going to we're not we're not going to kind of you know hold the funding back okay you, based on that yeah yeah based based on that that alone it's a bit more i, I suspect sensor based falls technology because mm. the because the market for that isn't as well established and there yeah. is such a plethora of usage yeah we would be looking for more for more input from yourselves for sensor based falls technology um less so on digital social care records but 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 if you're if you're kind of if you're willing to work with us then we, you know we would definitely kind of welcome that opportunity as well okay and so with the application pack set that expectation in terms of just so we can get an understanding of potential capacity and resource that may be needed for that sharing would, yeah. would that be outlined within the application pack uh yeah yeah you yeah, you, you, you would you would have the opportunity to kind of just describe kind of what 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 you've got in place in terms of okay. resources that can kind of yeah. support this okay. and then and then we'll work around it we're certainly not looking at anything that is going to be onerous we wouldn't yeah we wouldn't kind of look to kind of you know hijack kind of you know operational and clinical time that you have with your residents and and and, and kind of you know people that you support we will work around and and, and be yeah. adaptable as much as possible brilliant thank you for that all right brilliant thank you uh any other questions? Appreciate there's there's a few coming through in the chat. Is there anything that we want to raise here right now that I can help answer? No, we're OK. No, Dharmesh, I've, I've, got, I've got one. Uh, okay, Pramila go is asking, um, can can we apply for the sensor based falls prevention funding, even though we're already using a digital social care monitoring system? Uh, yes, it's 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 two different, two different funding pots, Pramila. Um, um, 
<laughs> yeah, you can. Thank you. All right. Uh, Peter, hi. Yeah, hi. Th thanks very much. Um, part of our um, falls prevention um, strategy over the next two years, um, part of that has been to install internal CCTV. Um, I did put a little question in the chat, um, but I just wonder whether that's something that's going to fall within the scope of um, um, the falls prevention um, funding. Mm, um... I'm going to open that up a little bit uh, and the reason I'm going to open it up a little bit because I I um I don't know if that's a definite yes or no answer Peter uh, I, I think we kind of we would need to look at what that what that CCTV solution kind of enables and 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 does it actually will it actually help to um to identify you know, kind of residents that 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 have fallen over. Will it will it result in a behaviour change? If if you see what I mean, um, as opposed to just being a kind of kind of a monitoring solution that is there in, in the background. So there's a bit of a there's a bit of a use case discussion that we that we'll need to have around that before we make a a final kind of call on that. If that's okay. Mm, yeah, and I'd be interested to um, have have the discussion and debate. Uh... Sure. Whenever that is, um, because we yep. s we see some real um, benefits in it. Um, as much as it's not just about monitoring, it's also about being able to do lessons learned. So um, where these things have happened, then you can actually look at what led to that, which is similar to some of the acoustic monitoring. It, it's it it's there to sort of start um, to understand how things have um, occurred. So yep, yeah, no, indeed, um, perhaps a later date. Yeah, no, of course. Yeah, if I could just ask colleagues to uh, to make sure that we reach out to Peter and we'll we'll have a follow up discussion with you, Peter, just to explore that because um, you know we we need people to we need people to kind of trial and evaluate some of these solutions and things. So we so, so we're definitely kind of building up that uh, head of steam on that front as well. So it'd be great to have your input into that. Um, so in, in terms of in terms of other questions uh, that, that you may be kind of thinking of, uh, I think we've covered off some of them. Yes, we'll be supporting you through that whole kind of application process as, as best as as best as we can so that we're um, not, you know, kind of not delaying progress, if you like. Um, do you need to have implemented this solution by a certain certain date? So, you know, it, we're kind of thinking, you know, yes, you, you we need your commitment by the middle of March or by the end of March. Um, but, you know, what is a realistic kind of what is a realistic time frame? And I was asking some of the suppliers about whether they have an expectation of you to 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 implement by a certain date. And um, and as it as it stands, they, they they don't appear to kind of they said, I don't believe there will be anything in the contractual documentation between yourselves and the supplier that says you must implement, you know, within six months or eight months or nine months um um so 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 from that perspective it there isn't a there isn't a push now having said that within within the memorandum of understanding that we that we sign with yourselves we would expect you to 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 implement within you know within a reasonable time frame we do appreciate that it's not something you could do straight away because you know operationally i i i'm i'm well i'm all too well aware that you know everybody is is stretched at the minute um, um, but having said that, at some point further down, further down the line, you know, we would we would expect you to 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 utilise the funds and the solution that you've that you've procured. Um, Jeannie, I'll let you in there. Yeah, so I wasn't on this point. So if you want to finish ah, okay. that point, I'll, I'll, just I'll another question, Dalmesh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, so you know, the, the part part of the part of the T's and C's is that we would expect you to implement a solution in a reasonable time frame, or we would be kind of you know, we would be looking to um, recoup that that in that that fund um, the, that award allocation from from you at some some point. But you know, it's all part of a discussion that we need to have with you. There isn't a hard and fast rule. You must do it by X day or else type scenario. You know, we're 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 all too aware and sensitive of kind of the challenges and pressures that you're all under. So we will work with you to. To, to to kind of you know agree a a reasonable implementation time frame that that will work for you as a as a provider. Um, Jeannie, do you want to come in there, or should I finish off the last bit? No, no, please finish no. off. Yeah, okay, yeah. Sure. Just an additional uh, question, but I think yeah. we were covering it. 
Yeah, fine. Um, does the funding cover digital to digital or just paper to digital? I think I said at the at the outset in response to one of the questions, the focus really is on helping those paper um, that those paper paper based providers to get them onto the digital step, if you like. However, we won't kind of reject out of hand any um, any applications from providers that already have a solution but want to move to a uh, an assured supplier. Um, only caveat really is that the the funding is for a, a, a is for core functionality, um, stroke care planning, care management capabilities. And then last but not least, who holds the contract with the supplier? So um, um, it will be yourselves that contracts directly with, with, with the suppliers. We will be there to kind of facilitate the dialogue. Uh, we will be there to kind of provide the funding for you. Um, um, but, but in terms of contracts, um, that will be between yourself and the supplier. Any questions? Um, while we wait to see if anyone does have any questions, Thomas, John oh. Renison has asked a question saying that we operate in four counties, so Bucks, Oxfordshire, um, which obviously is covered by Bol, but also Hertfordshire and Central Bedfordshire. Is yeah. there a way to submit one claim to cover all counties or do I have to submit one to Bol plus two to other claims for the other for the other yeah. areas? So I think the question is, uh, yeah, our funding is just for Buckinghamshire, Oxfordshire and Berkshire West. Uh, provide locations providers providing um, support in in our locations. So if you, you would need to reach out to the other ICSs for those other areas. Um, however, just just to sort of caveat that there is a um, a national program. So for for larger providers that cover multiple geographies, they can look to be on that national um, funding program. So that is something that. I would say if we've got any larger providers on the call today, that might be something you'd, you'd want to explore. Is there anything you wanted to add to that, Darmesh? No, no, I think that, I think you've covered it. Thank you, Junie. Liam. Hello, yes, uh, so I work with the, the Disabilities Trust and we operate across um, most of the UK and we it has been quite difficult actually to find much detail on this national uh, application. Um, do you have any details that you could forward to myself? Um, I'll put a link in the um, in the chat for you. Yeah. So I think previously what I'd seen was that it was only the CQC Mac oversight listed organization is that that's the one. still the yeah. case that is okay. the one yeah it is the market oversight one yeah okay okay thank you anything from anyone else okay i think uh please feel feel free to kind of post questions over the course of the day today as um you know, as uh, as you kind of start to digest what you've heard, we will share the slides with you. There is more information coming your way as well. Uh, and myself and the team will be in touch with you as well. So we can we can go through all, any or all of this um, at a more leisurely pace if uh, if that works for you. So. Um, yes, so there's just one other question, Darmesh. Pan mm -hmm. Roos has asked, as an adult social care care home offering permanent and respite residential care, we also offer specialist day care. Can we apply um, for those day care guests as well? So I'm assuming this is respite day care. Yeah. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I'm sure I think we'll need to take that one away unless Jeannie, you're you're more clear on it than I am. Um, I, I think we might need to take that one away because I know it is yeah. for supported living, extra care, residential um, and domiciliary care mm. um, and supported living. So I, I think we may have to take that one away um, if that's yeah. OK. Yeah, just just to ask that question about respite. Yeah, thank you for the question. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll definitely come back to you. Cool. I think. I think we might be ready to move on. Jeannie? I think we might be. So, yeah. um, sorry, Liam, there's a hand up. Is that a legacy hand? Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, brilliant. So if there's no further questions, um, um, we could take a break at this point um, and then be back at 11.05, if that's all right with everybody. Um, so for this higher demonstrations. Brilliant. Um, thank you. Just 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 to add, I guess, Jeannie, that yeah, we're using the same the same team's link for the rest of the day. So feel free to 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 dial off this one or just go on mute and turn your video off, whatever whatever works and stay connected if you like. Um yeah, be be great to kind of see you during the supplier presentations. Um there is it's quite it's quite a packed schedule for the rest of the day, I guess, is the other other thing. So I appreciate that not everybody will be able to watch everything or have the time. But I think as as was mentioned at the outset, we will record all of the all of the supplier presentations if um if you're not able to view them. Um yeah, Ranjit, we're back at uh, if you can be back online uh, at, at five past eleven, we'll be kicking off with the presentation at uh, ten past eleven with the first supplier. Brilliant. Right. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you.